I'm now going to move on to pregnancy. And pregnancy itself is a hypercoagulable state, meaning pregnancy revs up the clotting system. And the reason is, is that estrogen revs up the clotting system. This is probably a physiological mechanism to protect the mom from bleeding out when she has the baby. Because when you deliver the baby, you have this huge placenta shearing away from the uterus. And so you really want the clotting system to be optimized. But the problem with pregnancy revving up the clotting system is that it also puts women at higher risk of blood clots. And it also runs a risk of forming blood clots in the placenta that can lead to certain problems. So pregnancy itself increases the risk of blood clots about six to tenfold higher. And this risk exists throughout the pregnancy. But if you look at the postpartum period, the risk for a blood clot is even higher than during the whole pregnancy for the six to eight weeks postpartum while the blood clotting system settles down. It was very alarming to me to note that pulmonary embolism is in fact the leading cause of death of, mater of, of mothers in the developed world, to uh, uh, leading cause of maternal death, should I say, in the developed world. Now, the risk for a blood clot in pregnancy increases further if you have a cesarean section. That makes sense because they're interfering with um, the area where the pelvic vessels are. It also increases further if you have a personal history of blood clots, if you have a family history of blood clots, and if you have an inherited or an acquired thrombophilia. Your risk for a blood clot during pregnancy goes up if you have obesity, if you're older, and strangely enough, higher parity, the more children you have. And I haven't figured out why that is yet. So one of the important questions for pregnant women is if you need to be on an anti-clotting and anticoagulant drug, what is safe to use? The usual options that we use for blood thinning during, um, at all times are either regular heparin or unfractionated heparin. We also get the low molecular weight heparins. The most common one is Lovenox that we use. And then we have warfarin. So let's look at each of those. I'm going to lump unfractionated heparin and the low molecular weight heparins together because they carry pretty much the same risks. In terms of the risk to the fetus, these drugs are completely safe. Neither of them crosses the placenta, and so really there's no risk of the baby having any bleeding. Neither of these causes any birth defects, and neither are secreted in the breast milk, so they are completely safe for breastfeeding. In terms of risk to the mother, the risks are low. Um, there's about a 2% incidence of major bleeding, and this is pretty much average across all um, anticoagulant drugs. But these drugs can cause osteoporosis. And if you take a woman and put her on particularly unfractionated heparin for the duration of her pregnancy, you will notice that she loses bone mineral density. There is some bone loss on low molecular weight heparin in pregnant women because you're on it for the nine month period, but it's much less than for heparin. Now, which drug is better during pregnancy? Well, with the low molecular weight heparins, the complication rate is a little lower. Also, the drug lasts longer, so it's more convenient to give. But you've got to plan your delivery, because if you've just had your shot and you go into labor, depending on the timing, you may not be able to have an epidural, and you may be at a slightly higher risk of bleeding. So some people choose to have an induced labor. But overall, low molecular weight heparins are the drugs of choice during pregnancy. How about warfarin? Well, warfarin does cross the placenta. It gets through to the baby. It causes birth defects in about 4 to 5 percent of cases. And the risk is the highest if the fetus is exposed between 6 and 12 weeks of pregnancy. Now, there are concerns that brain abnormalities in the fetus can occur at any time during the pregnancy. And they think it may be related to some bleeding into the brain. We do need to avoid using warfarin after 36 weeks of pregnancy because the mom would be at risk for bleeding if she went into labor, and the baby would have warfarin on board when it's been delivered, so would be at risk of bleeding, and particularly having the head squashed going through the birth canal at risk for um, intracranial bleeding. Now, outside of the, U of the US, other countries do use warfarin during pregnancy. I'm from South Africa, and we very commonly use that drug, although we specifically avoided it during the 6 to 12 weeks of pregnancy. The reason a lot of developing countries use the drug is it's a lot cheaper than low molecular weight heparin. In the United States, 
The only woman that we really consider using warfarin in pregnancy is if they've got mechanical valves that we are concerned that the other drugs may not be effective. But again, we try to avoid it during that sensitive time. For breastfeeding, warfarin is safe. The babies, when they're born, actually get a shot of vitamin K, so they're protected, and they're very, very low amounts that are detected in breast milk, so to the most part, it's very safe. 